Hello and welcome to another ACE Courses video. In fact, this is part of a series of videos on polycystic ovary syndrome, or for short, PCOS or PCOS. What is PCOS? How do you diagnose it? What are the risks and complications of PCOS? How do you manage PCOS or PCOS? This is the first in a series of four videos. This deals with the diagnosis of PCOS. A useful way to think about PCOS diagnosis is in terms of three pillars and three steps. What are the three pillars and what are the three steps? Let's work through the diagnostic process. Now, we use the revised Rotterdam criteria for diagnosing polycystic ovary syndrome. And this criteria requires two of the three pillars of diagnosis to be present. So what are these three pillars? Well, the first is irregular menstrual cycles. The second is hyperandrogenism or excess male hormone in the blood. The third is polycystic ovarian morphology, which is when you get lots of little antral follicles in the ovaries. Now, to make the diagnosis, we need to know exactly how we define each one of the three pillars. So let's take them in turn. The first, of course, is irregular menstrual cycles. There are two criteria for defining irregular menstrual cycles. One of them is based on the menstrual cycle length, and the other is based on the number of menstrual cycles a woman has in a year. Now, how you apply these criteria also depends on when the patient had her menarche or when she started to have her periods. So if you're seeing a patient, in the first year, within the first year of starting her periods, in other words, within the first year of menarche, it's very difficult to make sense of the regularity or irregularity of the periods. In the first year, you expect the periods to be infrequent, erratic, and that could be completely normal. So we really only start to look at the regularity of the periods after a year from menarche. Now, in terms of the cycle length based criteria, if the patient is more than one year away from menarche, but less than three years from menarche, then if she has a cycle that is less than 21 days or more than 45 days, then that would be considered abnormal. In a patient who is more than three years from menarche or start of menstrual bleeding, then less than 21 days or more than 35 days will be considered abnormal. So that is cycle length based criteria for defining irregular menstrual bleeds. What about cycle number based criterion? If the woman is more than three years away from menarche, but she has less than eight cycles in a year, that would be defined as abnormal. Let's move on to the second pillar of diagnosis, which is hyperandrogenism. Hyperandrogenism means that there is excess level of male hormone in the female circulation. And there are two criteria for diagnosing it. One is based on clinical symptoms and signs. We call that clinical hyperandrogenism. And the other is based on blood tests, measuring hormones in the blood. And we call that biochemical hyperandrogenism. Clinical hyperandrogenism can manifest as hirsutism, which is excessive hair growth, or it can be excessive hair loss, or it can be acne. If you identify hirsutism, it's really important to formally document the extent of it. And for that, you can use the modified ferryman galway score. If you identify hair loss, then you can use the Ludwig visual score to quantify the extent of hair loss. 
There is no scoring system for acne, but you need to carefully document the extent of it. Let's move on to biochemical hyperandrogenism. You need to use total testosterone and free testosterone to make the diagnosis. If these are not elevated, you might want to consider androstenodione and dehydroepiandrosterone. Now, there are a few points you need to note here. To measure testosterone, use highly accurate tandem mass spectrometry assays. In terms of reference ranges, use the assay or lab specific ranges that you will be given. Now, remember, androstenodione and dehydroepiandrosterone are not terribly specific to PCOS. So the diagnostic value is somewhat limited with these. The final point to note with hyperandrogenism, especially when the onset is very rapid or the laboratory values are very high, is that you must consider other causes, particularly androgen secreting tumors. Let's move on to the third pillar of polycystic ovary diagnosis, which is PCOM or polycystic ovarian morphology. Now there are two ways of diagnosing this. One of them is based on ultrasound and the other one is based on a blood test called AMH. Let's look at the ultrasound criteria first. There are three criteria that you need to know. The first is based on the number of follicles, antral follicles in the ovaries. Now, if we have a follicle number per ovary, what we call FNPO, of 20 or more of follicles which are about two to nine millimeters in size, then that is polycystic ovarian morphology. The second ultrasound criterion is follicle number per cross section, what we call FNPS. If that is 10 or more, that is polycystic ovarian morphology. The third ultrasound criterion is based on ovarian volume. If the ovarian volume of either ovary is equal to or more than 10 mil in the absence of corpus luteum or another cyst, then that is polycystic ovarian morphology. The new international guidelines on polycystic ovary syndrome has also brought in a new criterion for polycystic ovarian morphology based on the hormone AMH. This is based on the fact that AMH comes from these little follicles, the antral follicles, and therefore if you have lots of these follicles, you will have high levels of AMH. So it is an indirect marker of antral follicle count. Now it's important to remember, both ultrasound and AMH are not useful for diagnosing polycystic ovarian morphology in adolescent girls because these tend to be high in young girls anyway. So there we are, we have three pillars for PCOS diagnosis, irregular menstrual cycles, hyperandrogenism and polycystic ovarian morphology. And a patient needs to have two of these three to fulfill the, the definition of polycystic ovarian syndrome. So if these are the three pillars, what are the three steps that I mentioned at the outset of this video? Now you could potentially test all patients for all three diagnostic pillars, but that could be unnecessary and waste of resources. Why do a blood test if it's not needed? And why do an ultrasound scan if it's not indicated? So to reduce the diagnostic burden, we can take a stepwise approach for diagnosis. And that's where the three steps come in. So step one then, if there are irregular menstrual cycles and there is evidence of clinical hyperandrogenism, say hirsutism, that gives you the diagnosis of polycystic ovary syndrome. Clearly, if clinically indicated, you will need to exclude other causes of excess androgens like Cushing syndrome and adrenal tumors. So with step one, you don't need to do any blood test or ultrasound scan to make the diagnosis. Let's move on to step two. 
If you have irregular menstrual cycles, but you have no clinical hyperandrogenism, in other words, no hirsutism, acne, or excessive hair loss, then you need to check for biochemical evidence of hyperandrogenism. If blood tests show excessive level of male hormones, then you have the diagnosis of polycystic ovary syndrome. So here you will note in step two, you do a blood test, but there is no need for ultrasound scan. So what is step three? Well, step three is what you do if you don't yet have a diagnosis. So if you have irregular menstrual cycles, but there is no evidence of hyperandrogenism, or you have hyperandrogenism, but the cycles are not irregular, in other words, you've only got one of the three pillars of PCOS diagnosis, then you will need to do an ultrasound scan or an AMH test. And if these give a positive result, then you have a diagnosis of PCOS. So now you know the three pillars and the three steps of polycystic ovary syndrome diagnosis. But what are the risks and consequences of polycystic ovary syndrome? And how do you manage these? Well, watch the other videos to find out. I hope you found this video useful and I hope you find the whole series is of benefit to you. And until we meet again in another video or perhaps at the weekend course, I bid you farewell.